So I'm really delighted to be here on this um, end of the week of the Festival de Trois Continents with you two, um, who have a, a quite a long relationship with the festival. So welcome, Yona Rosenkier and um, Kobi Mizrahi. Have I pronounced that properly? <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, the director and producer, respectively, of The Dive which was a project that went through the Atelier Produire au Sud yes. and was subsequently screened in the festival. So what I want to talk about with you now is how that all came about um, and what the journey was for you and your association with uh, Produire au Sud and the festival. So perhaps we'll begin with you, Yona. Sure. Um, tell me about the genesis of the idea, first of all, for the dive. Um, basically, the idea was... Um, I, uh, I started film school um, relatively late, and I think I was 27 or so when I started it. And um, I started it because I, I be basically what happened was that, um, you know, the, the army in Israel is mandatory. And uh, as a result, I started to suffer. After my military service, it was, I saw quite a bit of combat, and, you know, it wasn't uh, like a very nice uh, séjour. And um, I started to suffer from PTSD. And I knew that my first film was going to be about it. And uh, at that time, what bothered me the most was uh, I was very worried about my younger brothers. Um, I have two younger brothers uh, who I'm very attached to. And, um, and my, my nightmares were uh, that they would be called to war, basically. And uh, that they would, you know, die, basically. And so I knew that the film I was going to write was going to deal with that um, because, um, because I, I wanted to do this kind of uh, wild uh, uh, project with them because I think that in the end what was the most important for me was uh, the film deals, talks about uh, the pressure you have in Israel to go to war when, when it happens, you know, when they called. And, and it was always something that uh, bothered me extremely. Like nobody's questioning the reasons why, nobody's questioning whether uh, it's the right decision or not. You know, they call you, you go. And, um, and my brother said the same, you know. They said that if anything happened, I would go. And... Um, and I think that deep down I created this film also just for the fact that they can act, the, that in the film they act the two brothers that don't want to go. And in my uh, great crazy idea, it was maybe if they will act it, if they will be really called to war, maybe they will question it. Wow. And um, of course, I have no idea if it works or not. Thank God that they haven't been called, but... Um, no, but you remember that we talked about it in Tsukri yeah. Tan operation in 2015. You said, ah, the script already works because yes. Micha talked about it. Yeah, yeah, Just it's true. Just explain that to me, but what in happened in 2000, 2015? In 2015, b b before we, we shot, before we, but the film, the, the script already existed. Um, so uh, my younger brother was called to a war. And then he already started to question. But it was really qu crazy because the at some point the script imitated imitate mm. life and then life started to imitate the script and it was then it was just a big blur like you didn't I talked to my mom and she said like really it's like what you wrote you know when it's like a, and I told him I told her you know tell him not to go and she said I can't do that you know mm. and um, so it was very it was a very interesting uh, the behind the scene of the film <laughs> Trust me, it has the, the making maybe of. the making of has, uh, has uh, a lot of drama. Is its own story we could do like like uh, Apocalypse Now? They did a big yes. making of. We'll do the making of the dive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so returning to the film itself, you had that idea and you wrote about it. You wrote about your own experience. Was Kobe on board at that time, or of course, Kobe is on board. Beginning. Kobe is on board. We went to the yeah, film school together. Yes. Get rid of me. <laughs> it, we were in, we were we were classmates. Yeah, we studied in the same class. Yeah, at the at Tel Aviv University. University film department, and we did together his shorts. And um, and while we were in Venice with uh, his graduation short, then the um, the idea of the dive came up. Yeah, that's true. 
Okay, said, so I have a question here because I've heard you, Kobe, say before, you know, um, to get your first feature film funded, you have to have been through Cannes and Venice and so on, and you thought you wouldn't get that, but I've just learned that your short film went to Venice. So. But it was part of an omnibus of like a Israeli-Palestinian project that had like eight shorts, and so it wasn't my short that I understand. So yeah. you didn't have a high profile. Yeah. And you didn't benefit from that necessarily. It was a group of... Yes, A program exactly. of short films from yeah. Israel that went... By eight directors. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. So um, when you first started working together on this script, what did you think, Kobe? Did you think it was a good idea? Were you concerned that it was so close to Yona's personal experience that it might be difficult? I know it will be difficult because of the personal experience, but that's the reason I love the film, because it's a personal experience. And through the script, I get to know Yona, because I didn't know Yona as personal as like now. And through the script, I discovered a lot of I Yona's inside. And all the time, because I know stories in the script are much, um, are much bigger, Crazier. Uh, crazier than life, so I always wanted to, to understand the balance between what happened in reality and what is the script. Mm. Yeah. And uh, how, so it sounds like you were quite a creative producer, very involved in the script development, is that right? Or do you stick very much to financing and. No, he reads everything. He yeah, reads yeah, he read like. He reads the versions steps. and then he gives me notes and then he gives me notes and then he gives me notes. <laughs> and how do you take that, you know? How do you feel when... Very angrily. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. At the beginning I was really, because I was uncomfortable uh, to, to give notes because uh, I didn't feel like, you know, what did I do in life and what do I know? Um, because we started like it was 2013. Um, but, but I remember when we came back from Venice and I told you now, we sat in a balcony of Wurz, if you remember, and I said, okay, in three days we have a submission for development, let's submit something. Yeah. And you just wrote something over the weekend in two days and we submitted it and we got the development fund and that's how we started. And that development funding came from where? From the Israeli Film Fund. Okay. Yeah. So we have uh, an idea that's very close to you. And uh, was it a first draft script at that point or just treatment notes? Uh, three pages. Three page treatment for it. Yeah. And a bit of funding from the Israeli Development Fund. Yeah. Then what? Then we went into a desert of years of nothingness yeah. until, uh, until we basically we, we, we got to Produire au Sud. We were selected to Produire au Sud. Actually, it took us two years to get into Produire au yeah. Sud. The, the first year we didn't got in. Yes. They rejected you. We, we got rejected, us. of course. Yeah. That, you know, there's a, a phrase in French, and I'll get it wrong, se faire désirer. Yeah. To, you know this? I it's don't like think the, it works. They were playing hard to get. They were playing hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we really liked the program. We heard about it, and it sounded like amazing, like to go for one week somewhere in Israel, uh, to be in boarded the in the yeah. south, to be to be boarded, to, to to work with professionals from produce, French producers or wherever from, and you know to work on the pitch. It was like amazing. Who wouldn't want to do it? Yeah, we didn't know what is a pitch back then. Yes. And, uh, and then the master Stefano uh, pitched us all about it. So <laughs> tell me about that pitch because a lot of people have spoken about that the fact they don't know how to pitch, and yet you'd think that that I mean in a sense. Communic being able to communicate about your project seems a first step. That's al also the, the thing I think with uh, what I understood from the, p that there is two aspects that uh, were interesting. First is the one, the, the finished s pitch, let's say, um, which is what you deliver in front at the end of, this, of the week in front of uh, professionals and, and film funds ex executives and everything. But there is also the process of arriving to that pitch and the process of arriving to that pitch is very interesting because it basically you start by by pitching whatever you prepared and then you got you 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 start to understand that it's very difficult basically um, my exper experience was that it was very difficult to, to tell the story um, linearly if you want in a linear way because I kept on explaining oh yes and there is this that happens too. Oh, and wait, there is also this that, and then you know, it was like you, you couldn't say the uh, tell the story 
at one consecutive way. It was always like off from the sides, you know, adding information. And then you start to realize that you have also a problem in your script. Because if you need to, if you can't find a way to just tell the story, then you know that you have a problem, you know? That right. it's too complicated, that it's too, it's that, that it, it has maybe too much uh, plots or too much subplots, or you know, and so you have to really know how to uh, to tell the story, and and it helps you clean the story in many ways, you know. I see what you're saying. So it's not just about presenting the project to others; it's about cleaning it up for yourself. Yes. And you found Podio or Sud helpful in that respect. You hadn't pitched before, so is that right? In the, in in there were two aspects like. There were maybe more, but the two really critical one was that one. W first of all, we met uh, Dominique Wilinski will join me after when as she was um, uh, like a uh, you know a mentor, a mentor like a mentor, and then we basically uh, fell in love in, with each other and on the first days. Yeah, <laughs> and and there is uh, and and there was also the pitch, which was for me really re like a revelation. Nothing short of that, you know. Because everything I learned from his name is Stefano Tealdi. He was the I think he's still the pitch master. Um, really, in everything he told me, he taught me, was immediately put in 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 other uh, uh, script labs that I that I was. Or also, this is this was also the reason that the dive got the money. Because what happened was that there was they created in my film school in the Steve Tisch um, um, they created this grant. Um, they give one student one hundred thousand uh, dollars to for a, for a feature, and um, and I got into the final, and we were against I don't know three or four. And I remember that somebody told me, "Listen, the bet they they liked uh, your script wasn't the one they liked more, the most. They liked the most another script." And when I entered the room to do the pitch to those you know to the board of meeting to those five, I did exactly what Stefano told me, you know. And it was like a one-on-one, -on -one, almost the same pitch that I did in Prodvi Sud. And they, and, and I remember that they were very moved by my pitch. Mm. And they told me that, in the end, they told me, listen, the, based on the script, you shouldn't have got it, but your pitch did mm. the difference, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, really, it was what I learned in Prodvi Sud that gave us the first uh, seed money, and then afterwards uh, we got a... Uh, we got a little bit more from the Israeli Film Fund, but it was that what I, what I was taught there, mm. um, what we were taught there, you know, that uh, that really made the difference and at, at that day. And, mm. and I remember also Dominic that she told us um, what a difference it was. We did a pitch, the first pitch in Prodier Sud, and a month later we did in Jerusalem, where we were won there also an award, and she said what a difference and how you. You grew up to the pitch. How you've evolved already. Yeah, yeah. So in one month, just because uh, we practiced everything that been teached. I understand. So how important then was it for you both to be at the workshop? I mean, I'm, I'm imagining that if, if Yona had been here and learned how to pitch, but you hadn't been, perhaps it would have been less helpful? I, you know. Um, I, I don't know. I know that it really it bonds together. Yeah. Um, the, the teams, uh, I know there were uh, another great producer and director who were uh, with us at the Produre Sud, and they split just after because uh, <laughs> it, it uh, no, obliged you to be in the same room, yes. you know, together for a week. Yeah. And, no, it's uh, true. Yeah. It, it's very true. The, in, the, in the end, I think it's... It, and it's very important, I think, to experience because normally producer and director don't experience this in intimate uh, relationship and it makes you the most intimate. Yeah. Uh, working on the script together I I in a closed room with Sari Tujaman and speaking about the pr most private stuff mm. um, that bonds mm. together. Make or break. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And it made you. So now you've left Produire Sud. What happened after that? You got some money um, through that. Fund. Yeah, we, we got, we, then we, we, we got, we uh, firstly, yeah, from the university fund, mm -hmm. and then we teamed up with the production company of the university, and we said, always, we set the date, and we said, okay, I if we don't get money, we do it anyway, because we waited for money, like, for five years, 
So we said, anyway, we'll do it in September, the shooting. And then in February, we got the first money from the university. And then uh, before we got the money from the university, I submitted also Rabinovich Film Fund, another fund. And then we got it just two months before the shooting. So we were really happy. So each time we got more money, we said, ah, OK, now we have money to make it. Then we said, ah, now we have money to pay the team. <laughs> and uh, just two That's months it. before. And then it was still a low budget film, but, uh, but eventually it was with uh, $200,000. So with that, we, we, we started. Yeah. And then in the post, we got a little bit more. But, um, but we had behind us uh, Dominique, which was uh, the best thing, because once we teamed up in Pierre de Sud, she uh, creatively followed the project all the way, and uh, script-wise and script editing and, and, and the editing. Okay, the and we're going to speak to Dominic afterwards. But so I. But Dominic I is the responsible adult yes. between us. Uh, between you two. Yes. Yeah. Recalcitrant. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so She's the brain. But I Where need is the brain? to know. She, she'll be here. She'll be here. Um, I need to know how you came to meet Dominique, because you said you met her at Produire Sud, but I don't understand on how. On the picnic who. table outside. Yes. Start, uh, no, it was like we arrived, and they, with, there were a few uh, French producers, and she was one of them. And uh, we, we submitted, uh, you know, the, we sent uh, like a treatment. And I remember we were first we talked to somebody else, and she had a lot. She didn't understand that, and it was like she didn't understand a lot of the um, like the atmosphere. And the, and then we arrived to Dominic. I said, okay, so I would just tell you a little bit of background. So the kibbutz is that, and then she said, I have a cousin from Hanita. Hanita is a kibbutz three kilometers. I said, okay, so she knows everything. It's like you know, here, I don't, yes, it's like. She immediately Cut connected to the because chain. she yeah. knew the, yeah. the scenery. The, the, the whole, you know, atmosphere, yeah. scenery, what a kibbutz is, what it means when you're on the border, what happened during 2006, during the war with Lebanon, the second war with Lebanon. So, so you she know, understand everything without a lot of words. So that's what you meant, you fell in love at first sight. Yeah, yeah, no, and then, but uh, this was the first crush, but we fell in love when she, the, there was like a stupid subplot, and she said, why do you need this stupid thing, you know, just cut it off, and I said, oh, she's right, actually. <laughs> My God, I've been working on it on, for five years, I didn't yeah. see it, but it was like, uh, once she said it, it was so so clear, it was like a third arm on the, uh, yeah. the coming from the back of the... <laughs> <laughs> and until then, I thought, oh, it was interesting. Like, he has, like, three arms, you know, around. So, no, why don't you cut that? And then it was like, you know what I mean? And it all became clear. Yeah. yeah. And, and so for you, Kobe, what was it like having a French producer come in and, you know, you two were very close and had an intimate working relationship, and it wasn't another director joining you, it was another producer. How did that feel? Um... Felt great, actually, <laughs> from the beginning. Doesn't have to deal with me all by, by himself, <laughs> poor guy, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> there is, uh, like, uh, the father and there's a father suddenly <laughs> in the picture uh, to, to the help me take care of the child. Of the problematic <laughs> <was> child. <laughs> yeah, I'm not alone anymore in this story. And, uh, and uh, she, she gave so much of her experience and knowledge, and I didn't know anything like that. <laughs> uh, we were, you know, just the uh, rookies, I, just graduated film school. And I didn't so. know anything back then. <laughs> yeah. He's so honest, it's true. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and uh, I learned a lot of, from her, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about the other participants? Did you connect with them? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Very actually, much. Now they have one. There was uh, another group, uh, another pair uh, who just uh, have had their uh, film uh, come out also, The Swimmer. Huh? Adam Calderon and Nama Piritz. The Dive and the Swimmer. Well, yes, I exactly. The best, really speech, the best speech in the Podio Sud in our year. Yeah. He was, was like the star, ah. I think. Uh, and, and so you remain connected with them. Yeah, and uh, Stav, another producer, she's a good friend of mine since then. Mm. That's we true. Connected yeah. at, uh, at the Pudia Sud, and then we worked together since then. Uh, it, it really connected the group. And Tony, we get to know him, uh, I got to know him only in the Pudia Sud, and since then, um, well, you know, if we need advice, something, you know, just give a phone call. So it's not only me and you, no, it's the whole group. 
I think that also it was what was interesting in our year I think is that uh, really that the producers really connected and they became very like not the best friends but really good friends and they helped they each other and, yeah. and they <laughs> no and the, the directors not not so much but uh, but really the 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 producers really uh, helped each other and, and mm. kept a really it was good different uh, level of, of producers which was really interesting because uh, me and another one were the young ones who didn't do a feature before, and there were two more experienced ones, and uh, everyone was really different. Mm. So it's important to say that you were attending a, one of the regional Produit en Sud yeah. workshops, not yeah. in Nantes. Yeah. But you guys are in the unique position of being able to compare what the experience might be if you were based in Nantes and if you were at a regional one, because you've attended mm -hmm. as visitors mm -hmm. subsequently. Yeah. the Festival des Trois Continents yeah. uh, during the workshop. So can you reflect on that about... I think it would have been amazing to be in Nantes, you know, for the, for the international one. Yeah. Um, probably it would, because, uh, but first of all, it, it wasn't a possibility. Um, I think the difference is basically is the, is the fact that in Nantes, the, the group is international, very diverse. Uh, and and in the regional ones, they're all from the same country, you know. Mm. Um, but um, but and they what about the mentors? Were they from? They were from France. Yeah. Right. So they came across to you in Israel. Yeah. How exactly. How was that for you? For us, it was super important because you know, in the end, you don't. You make a film, and you want it to 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 reach an audience, and you want. To, do you want an audience to not just be your mom, you know, who <laughs> comes to see what her son did, you know? You want, to, <laughs> you want other people from other cultures also, not just Israelis, not just people from my kibbutz or my three kibbutz, my, re my area, you know, my region. You want it to be more, you want it... Uh, and, and the only way to, to do it, I think, is to, you know, step out of your little... Uh, comfort zone of the people you know and really show it to to people and uh, and let the people who have far far more experience and knowledge uh, than you give their take on it and saying this is this is not understood like have, like it, dominic did for you yeah cut the arm off yeah <laughs> yeah no but but also to yeah to, to make it more uh, in the same in the same phrase, I, I I will also contradict myself. But to keep what was what was ever in inside the film is Israeli. You cannot change it. But the fact that uh, it it has a, a French uh, producer, um, I think made it much more uh, understandable. Yeah, because for, it's very for the well international. to get the international point of view on every film that you do, just to to see that international people can understand the story. In the Prodigal Sud, they told us, wait, first explain what is a kibbutz, because usually we, we tell the story, but no one internationally knows what is a kibbutz, so we need to explain the essential things before you start explaining mm. the film. So then he started to uh, plan the pitch differently, to start uh, with um, um, completing the scenery and the atmosphere and explaining all of that, and then start to tell the story. Yeah. So that it made it accessible for an international yeah, audience. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, but and it's, it's and, and it's also it's important that the, the 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 international audience is important because you have to understand that in Israel, if you make a first feature film, and um, of course it won't make a lot of of entrance of, of uh, tickets, but it, you have to to be accepted in a festival, because if you don't, it, it is considered as a as a failure. And if you fail with your first feature, and you got a w you got film funds, uh, you got you know uh, film you didn't fund deliver the public funding. Yeah, yeah, they will never let you do another one. Back to the banana plantation. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so the the, the fear the is very is high. the pressure is high. You know, when it's like, and I remember, uh, you know, they in, they told me, uh, Katri told me, the head of the say he said he told me you are you're very persistent. And I remember, I didn't think this, this was a possibility that you can act with your brother. This was the reason, yeah, I didn't want to give you money. Ah, you, know? you need to explain that for us. Because mm, yeah. people listening don't know that you acted in your film as well. Yeah. Who is his two brothers? Yeah. In real life, had three brothers. And, uh, but I, the thing was that it was, like, I was very, I was super afraid, you know, that mm -hmm. 
I, I thought that if we don't, uh, if the film doesn't deliver, um, then they won't, they will never let me uh, do another film. Mm. You know, I mean, th that was my that was my feeling. You know, because I, I know other stories, and you you know the Israeli cinema is cinema world is very small, and uh, and basically they tell it to you, not even into. It's not like a secret. It's not implicit, it's explicit. And so that's a lot of pressure on a first time film. But I mean, you know, you've just finished making, shooting your second feature, right? Yeah. Did you feel that same pressure? Um, yes, of course. Because then, then, then they said there is the other law. <laughs> they said oh. that, if, that there is the second feature, which is like also something that you have to pass. Um, that and the the, the yeah, the first one was successful. Then there is the failure of the second. <laughs> uh, and the second one is also can also be uh, make it or break it. Yeah, exactly. So no, it was I again don't said, it oh. the second one anyway. But you don't um, copy? I don't believe it because I, I see directors who had the first great success. They they still they still keep getting chances because of the first feature. Mm. You know what I want to go back to is just. Um, it's very easy to um, get to lose sight of what Produit au Sud was about for you because of the success of the dive. The dive went on to really critical success, um, and it, but I think you know in other conversations we'd, we've had, you know, what was clear to me was that it was the the risk they had not the risk, but the. Um, the willingness to believe in you yeah. and to but this was, yeah, both the, the and to invest in not financially invest uh, in your professional development yeah. that enabled this subsequently to emerge. Yeah. But, but the, the 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 fact is that we already be, I think we submitted it twice to film funds in Israel. It was always a negative response. Sometimes it was very violent uh, answers. <laughs> yes. Um, from very appalled lectors, you know, and um, and it was the first time that somebody really, somebody said, uh, "Hey, I like you," mm. because you know when you write, you most of the time you're alone in your underwear, sweating, <laughs> you know, nobody is there to see the mi the misery. the misery and the sadness. You're al because you're just alone, you know. Mm. And you keep on sending it to somebody and say, oh, maybe I will get money to make the film. And then you get a negative answer and a negative answer. Mm. And, uh, and, you know, and I started, I, I'm coming back because it's important because I just, I really started late this film school, you know. Mm. Mm. And all around me, I saw people already with professions and people who knew what they were doing. And I didn't know what the, the hell I was doing. Mm. They still don't, honestly. <laughs> And, uh, and so it was super important for me that at that time somebody believed in me, mm. except for my mom, you know? Mm. Because in the end, you don't believe your mother also, because how <laughs> can she always, you know, think that? But uh, no, seriously, it was like a, mm. it was like a very, uh, it was a difficult time. And uh, it, I was super happy that, you know, that they selected us. And what I liked the most was the fact that there, were, that there weren't any winners. Ah, yeah. tell me about That's that. That's the Bobby. best. Yeah. There is no competition. You just so pitch. That's why we really became good friends and uh, mm. yeah. you take the element of the competition out. I think it's the best thing. Yeah. Interesting, because most of those big workshops have a kind of a winner. Yeah. yeah. But it means that there's a prize at the end, which is exciting. Yes, but I, uh, I don't like competitions. Mm. And uh, especially not with films. I think mm. it's. I think it's very weird. Honestly, this is another conversation. But I think it's very weird. Mm. Um, and I really liked this because it was like it. Con I connected very much to the DNA of the, of Chod mm. We made our large barbecue in the end. It yeah. was beautiful. Mm. Give me, let me light a fire, and I'm happy. You know, mm. in the end. Mm. And so when we met Guillaume, Mangueo became a really good friend. Mm. And uh, he receives also the, um, the the scripts I write. Say, what are you doing? You, do you have time to read this weekend? And then I'm sending him. So you continue to yes, remain in contact with Guillaume Mengue? Of who's course, the head yes. Of the who, by the way, has the most beautiful house I've ever seen. I'm not sure if, it's, if I'm allowed to say it. And what about the, a beautiful face? And of we course, agree. beautiful yeah. face, of course. Yeah. Him and Martin. <laughs> <laughs> what a couple. I think, I think it might be time for us to meet your French co producer. Yes. So Thank you very much, Yona. It's time I leave, it's you say. It's time you leave, and we're going uh, to... Go, you say, producers. go. <laughs> um.
Okay, so um, we've just been speaking with Yona and Kobe um, about the dive and about their experience um, at Produire au Sud. And now we're joined by Dominique Vilansky, who is the French co-producer of the project. And we can speak a little bit more about the production aspect. But first, I want to go back to, you know, Yona told us he met you first at Produire au Sud in 2016 with Kobe. And that, is that right? I, I don't have memory of numbers. Yeah, yeah, it was 2016. I don't want to And that it was older, love at so. first sight. Now, it's not the first time he's told me that. So he didn't just tell me because you were here today. We did another <laughs> interview beforehand. <laughs> before this festival and he quite independently said i love that woman <laughs> she's just the best producer i'm gonna and get red you know. yeah so tell <laughs> me about your um love story yes your <laughs> version of the love story <laughs> um yeah, i was part of the consulting team at produro sud in zerot in israel at that time, I was also working for this cinema school. I was in charge of the international promotion of the school. And uh, yeah, I must say, uh, it was love at the first sight. First of all, I read the project before, and I knew it just brought me back to the time when I was visiting this kibbutz uh, just before the Lab Lebanese war. And I heard the joke like, no worries about rockets, we are too close to the border. The rocket goes up straight to the next kibbutz, which is Yonas kibbutz. I never went there, and I knew I only have to worry about snipers, but no rockets. So when I read the project, I was like, oh, it rings me a bell. In fact, and I knew exactly uh, what was the context of the film and what they were leaving there, because I, I mean, I can't say I did live the same because I'm French and I was a tourist and I was only there for one week. But I was already scared. <laughs> but mm. just to live this daily life with this threaten, mm. with the war, uh, I mean, I knew what uh, Yona was talking about. And I also was really touched by these adult childhood games between the three brothers. Uh, um, about the, 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 the trauma from the army, the post-trauma. Uh, like a lot of questions I was asking myself about just being obliged to go to the army after high school. High school. You are 18 years old. Mm -hmm. That's where we are supposed to go to the university, have some fun and so on, and you are for three years in the army doing things that you don't want to do, mm -hmm. obviously. And then you have to come back, you have to digest, and then you have to start studying and, and, and build on your life from there. And, uh, and the, the, this three point of view, plus the craziness of the situation, the story of, you know, you have to bury, to put the end of the father who is dead for one year in a cave, <laughs> <laughs> and all this crazy situation, so I was I think I was touched by the project, and when I met for the fun, I saw these two guys together. I was like, okay, let's go. And uh, yeah, spending this week together, and, uh, and also with the others, and it was really moving, and I just, uh, I mean, I couldn't leave them. And did you have any concerns about the fact that the project was so anchored in, in Kobe and Yona's personal experience? No. <laughs> mm. No, but I mean, I'm, I don't know what to answer. I think most of the projects then, uh, there in the Pradera suit were personal experiences. There is mm. like the swimmer I, that uh, Yona was referring to, um, to uh, uh, the, the swimmer. Film and the swimmer, the dive, it went, and it, which is even more personal, I would say, <laughs> almost. And the, all the projects are personal. And uh, anyway, I'm only looking for personal projects. When it's not personal, I don't see the point. I suppose <laughs> that's what I was thinking, because having observed 
podium have also said a few times, it occurs to me that these are stories that are steeped in the reality of people who, whose stories are often not told. Yeah. Mm. 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 Yeah, and I think the more personal, the more universal. Mm. And I'm always looking for personal stories from different countries to feed me, in fact. That's how I, I mean, how I also, I mean, live and grow up, mm. if I can still grow up. But like listening to new stories, personal stories, and I think it's the wonderful opportunity and chance to be involved in other people's personal story. Mm. Because I'm gifted, you know, I'm French. Mm. I've been growing up in France, like no war, nothing, no army, you know, I'm, mm. I'm okay, I survive, but I mean, since I work in cinema and I, before I was a distributor, before being a producer, it's always been my goal, like to show other story and to make people open their eyes on other culture. Mm. Is That's that how you became, or why you became involved as a, one of the mentors at Produire au Sud? Yeah. Uh, you should ask Guillaume, but yes, I think so. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I don't know, I'm still very curious. Mm. <laughs> mm. And uh, yeah, and it's, it's uh, I mean, it's also the, the, the point with co-production is like, you know, trying to do your best uh, to help people to make their film happen. So that's that's really important because that's I mean, ultimately, it's a, it's a co-production workshop, isn't it? And um, and yet, it must be quite difficult, Kobe, to find co-production partners. I imagine. Yeah. Had you always intended the dive to be made as a co-production? I did, like I said previously, I, I was really green. I didn't know anything, like when you say green in Israel, it's like... Uh, Inexperienced. Uh, yeah. So I didn't know anything about co-productions. I think the first time um, I said about co-productions was in Podir Asul, because in the film school you don't speak about co-production. It's like, uh, they, you, you don't speak a lot about production, so co-production, it's uh, like a big something far away overseas. <laughs> but then I met Dominique, who's a, a, a lovely person, and you know, uh, it just like, it doesn't feel like, you know, when you say big co-production, you, you imagine the big studios somewhere there in Europe or the States, and you know, she's a producer uh, like me, just much more experienced. Uh, that no thing, so yeah, it was just naturally. Mm. Uh, how can I say it? Was the yeah, motivation then? Um, I, I mean, was it something that happened almost unexpectedly? So that you met, fell in love, and therefore Dominic came on board, and the project went from there, and it happened to be a co-production. Or were you needing to find financing in another country? I think. Uh, the reason it's not because we wanted uh, another financing or stay, it's just because once we met her, we didn't want to let her go, <laughs> and we want her as a partner with us. Yeah, and in the end, at the end of the day, it didn't bring money. I mean, we were rejected twice from uh, Cinema du Monde, so we, and and once you are rejected from Cinema du Monde, there is no other door. I can no on no come from France except waiting and try to apply for post-production funding, I was still there Yes. and following up the process. And the, the, I think our relationship was strong enough for them to credit me and also their partner, Efrat, uh, who was the, I mean the a producer of the film with Kobe. They were, I mean, thankful enough uh, to keep me on board as a co-producer, I think she's and being uh, humble, right? also yes, right. to tell me it's not only about cash money; it's also about the the, the work you did, and this is, has a value, which exactly. is not always true. I I have the luck that people I met through because I I did co-produce other projects from Produire au Sud, 
And I'm not always able to bring money because everyone thinks like uh, France is the heaven, uh, paradise for cinema. Mm -hmm. But with, when you don't get Cinema du Monde, it's really difficult to bring money. But there is also a, another way to be part of it. It's just like help the project to go to other markets, find other co-producers, uh, being there, uh, uh, and mostly creatively the and support the project yeah. and work together. It's not and it's worth a lot of money and even more than the money. Yes, and make sure that because the point is not only to make the first feature, make yeah, sure exactly. that uh, that you will be able to to make the next one. And it's not about money; it's about just having the film at the also at the right place being known enough and recognized enough to be able to find on the next one. Mm. And mm. that's what did happen, in fact. Mm. Mm. So you have a very um, creative role as producer. And um, are you working on this next feature with Kobe I'm and I'm working with them forever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And in the middle, we did uh, a show together. Yeah. Did Two sh yeah, yes. Yeah. And then I, I did another I shot did with uh, you now. And now we just shot the new one the together. Feature. And I still didn't find money. <laughs> but I brought a Swiss partner on board. Who bring a lot who of bring money. A lot so, of money. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like bringing money. Yeah. Yeah, not but as you said, that's not the, in fact, it's not the most important role of a producer, really. No, and it's also, yes, to, I mean, this is also the, 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 the point with the Produire au workshop. It's just like to make, I think people who never went to the on the international market to make them confident about working with a uh, European, most probably co producer, it's uh, they, they don't know. They, they perhaps they think we're going to eat their project, or mm. perhaps, you know, it's you have a lot of ideas as that. How do you deal with a contract? Where the money come from? What's going to become of the film? My, do my film become French? You know, like suddenly. Yeah. And uh, really to make them more confident about the international market, mm. to tell them that we are not like big wolves. Yeah. And um, just we are just there to help them make their film. Yeah. What were your preconceived ideas, Kobe, about producers? Dominic said that, you know, that in as a mentor, they're, they're wanting to ensure that those who participate uh, Understand they de de to demystify that process for them. What were some of your preconceived ideas about European co-producers? Um, I think it was the first time I met European co-producers. I don't remember. No, I, I met before, but but it's the first time we, I had a bond. You know, a long talk and not like a twenty minutes uh, quick interview with someone. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really get to know each other for the first time. Um, Did you have fears? Did you, you know? Yeah, of course. Uh, that uh, like, yeah, it, I know it's like you know, um, it's like a, a marriage. Me and the director always uh, for long, and then you need to add another person for this marriage. <laughs> and um, the threesome and how to make that work. Sometimes. Yeah, and make it work <laughs> exactly. So it's really frightening, and you must find the the perfect person. Um, <laughs> to work together uh, <laughs> in cooperation. Um, and yeah, and that's one that, that's It's scary just thing, like a midwife, you know? Okay, so we yeah, won't it have a you threesome bring the kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's get the kid. Yeah. Um. And how, tell me about how, about your relationship, the two of you at a distance. Are you, are you sharing um, things regularly or do you, each go about your own thing and only come back to each other once when there's a particular need for something either from France or from Israel or? The point is that we're on top and now for a couple of years we have a personal relationship so we always talk. I mean yeah. we talk about whatever. We're on WhatsApp and yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, and so I'm there, okay. I'm there, like uh, how are you? Oh, like we sh uh, Kobe was shared that the, the film is producing with me. Uh, we share our happiness and our <laughs> everything. 
Yeah. Yeah. I know. We. It, I, I don't think there is more than uh, I don't know, like two weeks when we don't talk, even yeah. like. Uh, like a in higher, WhatsApp, yeah. Yeah, emoji. Like uh, your photo <laughs> just from somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Th yeah. 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 But this is really specific. It, I mean, because uh, surely you can't have that relationship yeah, ongoing no. with everybody you work with, Dominique. It's quite difficult. No, with a couple of them, but uh, not with all of them, of uh -huh. course not. No, this is not. Uh, and can you clarify for me um, uh, whether it's something that happens regularly for you as a mentor that you would co produce with the participants, or whether that's unusual? It's uh, I would it's quite unusual. I mm. mean, uh, uh, you, you can't co-produce everyone you are mentoring. That's not possible. And with some people, you have some specific bonds. With some others, less. Uh, but I always, I always follow up. Even though I'm not involved in the project, I always answer and. Just like Guillaume does, like uh, have a like a long term relationship. On top, I am running a program called the Factory, which is a short film program. Every year, I bring four uh, directors about to do their first feature film, to co-write and co-direct with local directors in a different country for short film. And this sorry, I don't follow that. So you have okay? A yes, sorry. <laughs> So you like, have like Yona was saying, you have to <laughs> to get it clear. Yeah. Um, it's I'm uh, here for that. To yeah. Say the the point was the, the starting. If I go from the starting point, it was like, uh, I was kind of tired to hear that cinema is a universal language. I don't buy the concept of universality. Right? I had to explore it. So what about bringing together two directors with two different cultures? who don't know each other and make them make a film together. And let's see if there is this so-called universal language they can share. On top of that, the directors who are about to do their first feature film, sometimes they wait for eight years to get the money. And in between, they don't have the chance to make a film, to be on set, to talk about cinema. Because when you are a director and you talk with your producer, you don't talk. I mean, it's not about making a film. It's not about being on set directly. So let's give them a chance to work together and confront their vision of cinema mm. in a short film. The luck I had is that uh, this uh, program of four short films did open Directors Fortnight for eight years. Wow. It was like without, I mean, going, it was a partnership, so it didn't go through a selection process. And I brought, I mean, the foreign directors. I find them during the workshop when I'm a mentor on a, we have a lab and so on. And I bring people I want to spend one month with. <laughs> That's the point. And locally, in the different country, and I did it in Taipei, in Chile, in Tunisia, in Lebanon, in South Africa, in Finland. And I brought Guillaume uh, as a director. Mm. Uh, I have to clarify that. So Guillaume Mengue, who is the head oui, of pardon. Atelier Produire au Sud, yeah. is also a director whose yeah. short has won many prizes all around the world. So yeah. in his, with his hat on as director, you brought him to be part of the factory. Exactly. In the, it was Finland, Denmark. Mm. And he did a wonderful short film. Mm. So, yeah. And, uh, and, and so I, I, I brought a couple of directors who did attend the Produire au Sud or the workshop to this uh, short film program. To, I don't know which question I was answering anymore. But it was uh, yeah, about co-producing. Uh, yeah, I did, I did uh, also co-produce another project from, um, from Produire au Sud uh, from Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. And uh, the film was just competing at ITFA. Right just now. this it, year? Yeah, wow. like yesterday. Uh, in Amsterdam, it's a documentary. Uh, I did, uh, there were people who were part of the factory, this short film program, did attend later on Produire au Sud, like Samantha Nell from South Africa, and I'm co-producing her. Yeah. 
Um, who else? But, I mean, the, the but it's not for that, is it? That no, when you're a mentor no, no, at one no, of I, these I, programs, it's not I'm not a mentor not to do my market. Yeah. This would be really mm. uh, bad. Mm. No, no. No, no. Just I so don't think none of the mentors never do that. Mm. It's like like by chance or really you create strong bonds with people while uh, doing the workshop. But I don't think any of us uh, never attend as a mentor or as a consultant to find project. Right. Uh, and to be did it done. This would be disgusting. Yeah. You know? And we have enough markets where we can find mm. project. Of course, you, you, in 20 minutes, like uh, Kobe was saying, you don't meet the people the same way. But yeah. most of the time, I think 20 minutes is enough to find out if you are able to work if with you people or not. Another meeting, yeah. To continue. Well, <laughs> well. If yeah. you shine brightly. Mm. Um, can you Blind two <laughs> <laughs> cast your mind back to, it may be difficult because it's now five years ago, but to your meetings in the producer sessions? Because, you know, during the workshop, there's separate sessions for directors and producers as well as group sessions, yes? So in your producer sessions, can you um, remember the things that you found most helpful, Kobe? I don't. I remember, like, two years ago, I went also to another producer suit as a mentor uh, to share the experience of the dive. And th th there I remember exactly uh, what the other people said. But what I said, like, five years ago? I don't remember anything from the producers. Do you remember something? No, I remember seeing where exactly where we met because it was outside and uh, we did decide not to make the meeting inside but outside yeah. in, a, in, in a kiosk and that was it and we were all living together in this kibbutz and like sharing the, the whole day together i just remember that i, and I, I didn't tell you about know the so many things that i learned in Prodea the Sud. I didn't know about the possibilities of the markets and anything. I, I, I got for the first time uh, to see a co-production agreement uh, wow. and, uh, um, wow. in, in the Prodea Sud and they gave us like the uh, uh, booklet with all the, with all the stuff yeah. that after that every time I, I was going to check in the different things uh, financial things and also just in the booklet that we got there, in all the materials. So it became a received. reference Bible for you? Yeah, yeah, a Bible I with references for stuff. Yeah. Uh, because I still, I do use it too. Yeah? Yeah. So you refer back to, because there's what, pro formas of different forms that you need and... No, not only that, it's not only about that, it's also about what are the existing workshop, when you exactly. apply, when is the deadline. What is the best, like worldwide? Yeah. Uh, what kind of uh, workshop funds? And it's like it's a very, very important. Yeah, tool. it was the first time I was exposed to all the possibilities that we have with a film during the development uh, stage, mm. and uh, also after to the financial stage. So that you can, and the, can the plan great, a strategy. I think, yeah, I think yeah. also that the, one of the best point is that. Uh, uh, Produro Sud is not like I call it like the Kleenex effect. Like, I don't you know, know what the <laughs> <laughs> Share no, with the me Kleenex, the, 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 tissue. the tissue effect. It's just like, you know, people attend the workshop for five days, they have everything, every doors are like open, and they go back to their countries, and then mm. everyone forget until the next session. There is a real uh, follow up. Follow -up. Mm. So it's like, Whatever you did for the Rossi 20 years ago, and you could see it with like Vania, who were there, mm. faithful to mm. Produro Sud. And, and you know that at any moment, you can uh, send an email to Guillaume asking him for whatever, mm. and he will find the, the right person. Just if he can't answer by himself, he will connect you with the right you. person. So yeah. it's not like you're going back to Bangladesh, Israel, or wherever. And okay, you learn for one week, and then uh, you know yeah. you are by yourself. Yeah, and then you yeah, you can, yeah. That's we the popular, the most important uh, thing in the workshop, I think. People are the most. They choose the people very wisely, and 
good people. Yeah. And that's why it's, it's also like, uh, you know, a thing, a very family story. Because like in, in, in Zderot, it was only Israelis. But even though you were talking about Tony, who is a Palestinian producer, and perhaps you would have never met him yeah. out of Produire oh. Sud, but when you are here and you have people from all these different countries, you have a worldwide family later on. Yeah, and the film industry all of a sudden becomes very small. Yeah. Very. And you know, after that, he wrote with Guillaume a short film also. Yes. They the successful together. one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. The 50 award uh, short film. How yeah. much? How many <laughs> awards, Guillaume? 42, <laughs> not 50, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Almost 50, soon 50. Yeah. Um, let me come back. You know, when I said, I asked you about um, what you talked about, it was very interesting to me that both of you said, I don't remember what we talked about, but I remember that we decided to go outside and have our meeting outside. And the reason it strikes me is because um, it's one of the things that Guillaume has spoken to me about as being very important, and so have other alumni, is that sense of time to move about freely and that some of those connections happen outside of the structured activities, uh, which contrasts perhaps with some other workshops where speed meetings are set up. Mm. And so, yes, I'm interested in your reflections about, uh, particularly as you've both now participated in both types of workshop, um, about how different things come out of those different contexts. I think you cannot compare like a workshop like this when you're five weeks intense together. Five uh, days. Five days uh, <laughs> born together to just one-on-one on one meetings uh, in every other place. Um, the, the, the results is all, will be always different. Or you, you'll meet a person in five days, you know if you want to spend more time together or just or just apart. not, yeah. Yeah, yeah and this, this one week in Nantes, in fact, it's not in the context of the, uh, I mean, it's already in the context of the festival that fully fits with the workshop. Mm. It's not like uh, you're gonna have American films and French film and a huge festival, red carpet and so on. No, you know, you it's within the same universe and you are really, in the festival, even though you spend all day, you know, here or there, really working, at 6 p.m. you are part of it. Yeah. When yeah, you are back to Nantes. Yeah, we from the festival uh, and we had a workshop with, uh, I think, a Jardinian director, it was back then, who also did put your suit. So let's well, describe yeah. this a little bit. I mean, we're, we'll, we'll soon close, but I think it's important for those who haven't been here because it's such a, a unique, set up that you have the Festival des Trois Continents mm -hmm. with film screening from Asia, Latin America and Africa. And then within that, the Produire au Sud Atelier. And so you're saying at the end of the day, participants and mentors would pop out and see a film from one of those continents. And yes, and have the, like, the usual uh, drink. And there you can meet people. And, uh, I mean, and during the whole week you have people attending other directors who come to screen their film, so they are available to their producers, some partners, some French distributors. I mean, and it's, it's a very uh, uh, small, it's not the proper word, but it's a very protected environment. Intimate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's not like you have to run from one place to another. You know, everything is the, in the same area. Mm -hmm. And in, uh, in, uh, in this Produire au Sud in Zderot, in Israel, it was in the context of the festival, but the festival is run by the cinema school. And this festival is mainly, the competition is only about student film, graduation film, mm -hmm. and then you have mainly documentaries and so on. And everything is in the same area mm -hmm. and mixed up. And it's summer and you're in Israel. And, <laughs> and, the, and you fall in love. <laughs> voilà, and we all live in, in, the, in, the, in the same uh, guest house, in the kibbutz. We are all together all day, 
and that mix up with people at night. There is a concert every night. Ooh. I mean, and it's only students, so it's something also different. So all the, these people are the so same age. Atmosphere, yeah. What? yeah. And good food. With good food, simple. Good yeah, hummus. <laughs> Best hummus. <in> <gasps> voilà. Okay, so to close, what would you say to producers, perhaps inexperienced, who have compelling stories to tell, or uh, but who may hesitate to think about applying to produire au sud? Um, yeah, what would you say to them? Don't hesitate. <laughs> why? Why do you hesitate? You will meet your uh, your closest friends and family. I think in this. And uh, I don't know if it's only me, it's interesting, or the other producers are also not as experienced in this specific workshop. Because I think that was the best thing. Everyone were uh, young, not in the age, in the profession life, and you can really learn a lot from it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and then you will also, attending, you will also understand how much it is important to develop your project, mm -hmm. yes. the development right. phase. Mm -hmm. You have to, and I think really it opens the eyes of the producers. They do then understand that it's not like enough writing a synopsis and the first draft of the script to be able to attend the international market. It's like you have to develop and dig into your project and dig and dig again mm -hmm. and work just to be able to to answer all the questions about the project mm -hmm. and be able to face the international market. And mm -hmm. I think this is the most important thing because you have feedback from everyone and then you go back, you realize, and you dig a mm -hmm. little deeper mm -hmm. and deeper. Mm -hmm. You can't just, for most of the country, and especially South Asian countries, you know, you write a script, your project, you need 200,000 euros, you find Fi private finances and then you don't understand why your film doesn't reach the international market mm. because at the end of the day you did it for your own market right but when you attend this kind of workshop you understand that you have to go a little deeper and develop your project to be able to enlarge your market mm. so from what you're saying it sounds like Produit en Sud is taking people outside of their comfort zone but in a very safe and nurturing manner. Completely. Mm -hmm. It's a safe environment to understand the harsh reality. Oh, <laughs> nice! <wow. laughs> okay. Environment to understand the harsh reality. Mm. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Thank you I like both, it. Kobe, <laughs> Dominique, and um, let's go and see some fun. films. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.